Okay, to 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 Shimmy Weiss. Do you know his father's name? Anybody? Oh yes, mm -hmm. Meshulam. Meshulam. Meshulam was. He might have had a second name. Meshulam Weiss was his father. So Shimon Ben Meshulam. The Shomer should have an Aliyah. The uh, the Weiss brothers. They wow. learned. They learned in the Lubavitch Yeshiva. In Brooklyn on Ocean Parkway with me. Um, <coughs> so the oldest brother, I think I told Yaini and Moshe, is a friend of mine, uh, a little older. Uh, Mordechai, he lives in Tapuach, I believe. So, um, and then there were the younger brothers. He was one of the younger younger ones. Uh, there's Kanei Nahara, the parents had 15 children. Well. Yeah. And the uh, parents lived, uh, you know, relatively, I think, into the 70s or 80s. Anyway, Neshama Shav and Aliyah, and uh, only Simchas from here on, so we'll dedicate the shir to him. The, yeah. she, uh, the, the idea that we're learning about here in the Mimer is an interesting idea, and that is to, the Rebbe goes about to prove his position, his position, to prove the position of Hasidus, that Hasidus as an integral, an integral and an absolute necessity to invigorate all of Teda with with Pneumius. and that's a, that's a heavy argument, a heavy position, and this is why he wrote the Kuntris. So first, I want to read note nineteen, if you don't mind, because Hillel Hatzadik over here asked about Radlo. And to our to our luck, Baruch Hashem, there's a note 19 which tells us what Radla is, at least in, in, in some in English on some level. So let's do this together. 19, note 19 on page 27. This is um, Radla, a Kabbalistic term. Well, first of all, it's an acronym. Okay, Reish Dalid Lamid Aleph, four letters. What is it? What's the acronym? Reisha de loy isyada. The head, the beginning, that is not knowable. Reisha de loy isyada. Okay, now in English. A Kabbalistic term indicating the deepest and innermost level of the essence of God, of Hashem, which is entirely unknowable. Now look here, this is very important. Not only because of the profundity, but because it is utterly beyond the realm of knowledge. Now you see, we don't have any idea what this means, because everything we process is through knowledge. <laughs> so how are we to understand something that's beyond the realm of knowledge? But that's what the Reisha Delo Yisyad is. It's an experience, a level, which is not just, I, don't, I, I can't relate to it or I can't get there because it's so, pro, uh, so deep. It's beyond the realm of knowledge. Chassidus experience recognizes the bounds of intellect as innate. Intellect is a manifestation, a power of the soul or a sphere of God and is not essence. Essence transcends intellect. Thus, Ein Sof transcends knowledge because knowledge itself originates on a lower plane than God's essence. In a simple English, there is the God, as God is an essence, Hashem, the way Hashem is an essence, transcends the realm of knowledge, not the details of knowledge. The details of knowledge, you have smart professors, smart rabbis, smart, smarter spouses, okay, that might know more than you on certain, certain things. That's not what we're talking about. 
That means that this particular professor and rabbi and spouse learned more of this topic and knows it better. Very nice, good. But you're not going to say that the difference between a dollar bill and a million dollars is ad infinitum, is ain't soft. What's the difference between a dollar bill, one dollar and a million, a numerical equivalent? But do they have an... How, how, how is a, a million dollars created through a million dollar bills? So as soon as you understand that a million, a million is created from a, 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 a million dollar bills, you're giving a chashivut, you're giving a chashivas, you're giving an importance to one dollar. And if you wouldn't be giving a chashivas to one dollar, a million is worthless. So what do we see? We see there's a comparison. The same as with knowledge. The fact that this teacher and this professor has so, or this rabbi has so much more yidea, fine. But it's not as though there's no erech, that's the word I'm using, erech between the two. That's why in Chabad Chassidus you always find the term Ein Aroch. And it's not just Chabad Chassidus, but it's a lot in the memoriam of the rabbi. Ein Aroch, Ein Aroch. There is no Erech. So what, what we're saying over here is that Reisha de lo Yisiada is something similar to Ein Aroch. Reisha de lo Yisiada is a level of godliness in which is Ein Aroch to the details of godliness. And what we were saying, and so that's 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 what <laughs> that's what Reisha de lo Yisiada is. Hillel, is, is it any clearer to you? Well, it's uh, it's clear that I uh, yes, it's fine. Sounds I mean, by its very nature, it's uh, you can't be clear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I was going to say something along that line, but yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't find the words. Okay, let's go now to page um, uh, fifty thirty-three. We're at uh, the fourth chapter. That Ebba said before we begin the fourth chapter that Chassidus is not bound by Tzir Tzir means a form when, when we look at ourselves and the world the first thing that comes to mind we, we build a box we build an image right? some relationships this way he is this way she is this way that is that way why? because we in our cup is sir we create Tzior. Tzior. And because we create Tzior, something that's outside of the Tzior contradicts what the creation that we created. So let's say Gemara and Halacha and Musr and everything else, right? Kabbalah. They are Metsuyar. They are already boxed in to... The, the, the way the Talmud works. Kabbalah is boxed in to the way Kabbalah works. And that's why it's very possible to have something in Gemara that doesn't jive with what some, the way it's explained in Kabbalah, at least on a superficial level. Why? Because the, because the world... Of, of 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 Torah as it is, as it is in the Pshat Remish Drusoi the Pardes the four ways of learning Torah each is limited to to its confines to its category to its definition so I'll give you an example of this in the early 1940s. The, uh, the previous Rebbe had a, a, a magazine, a pa- newspaper, a publication called Hakriya Vihakadusha, The Call and the Holiness. And why did he... It, it was a time when the war already started and faith was going out the window. The Rebbe felt he needs to give the Jewish world, the Yiddish speaking and reading Yiddish world, something to hold on to, something to build their faith. And he called it Hakriya Vahakadusha. 
the publication was not officially under Lubavitch, under Chabad, but it was, they had an editor, it had a pen name, and one of the things that the, that ever worked with the editor was to share basic concepts of Hasidus, to introduce Hasidus to the Yiddish world, many of which might might have you know said we're Hasidim we come we come from Hasidim but they had no idea what real Hasidus is they never really learned Hasidus Hasidus meant just you know Shalashud is singing some nice nigunim and 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 shuckling a little bit and once a year maybe going to a rebbe but to say that they studied Hasidus no they didn't study Hasidus and the rebbe felt that. The only way to to help the Yidden is to introduce a concept of a neshama and what's the difference between a Jew and a non-Jew, the purpose of life, the basic fundamental teachings that we find in Tanya. So over there, the Rebbe also used Chazal, basic ideas in Chazal, to explain uh, and explain them based on Hasidic thought. So one of the examples is. An ox that gores a cow. And this is a, something you ask any yeshiva bacher when he starts learning the uh, uh, kama and he starts learning the gemara. You know, he'll tell you, yeah, do you pay 50%, 100%, and that whole discussion. The Rebbe explained it, the Rebbe had the editor explain it in in Ruchni's dicker terms. What does that mean? There's a cow, there's a, a, a shur is aggressive. There's the ag- aggression of the person. And, and, and other animals are more passive. And he speaks about it in terms of character development and the Yetzirah and the Nefesh Abamis, things like that. The way the writer, the editor, who was a novice in Chsidis, he didn't know Chsidis, he was brought onto the job, he had a good pen, he knew Yiddish well, so he can write properly Yiddish, and he was a good writer. So he learned on the job basic concepts of Chassidus from the previous Rebbe, and probably the Rebbe too. And we know this because once a week, once a week, someone would, uh, would, would be seen coming into 770, and no one knew who he, who he was. And, you know, in the Bacharim, the, the 770 students knew pretty much who's coming and going, you know. It's not a big base medish at the time, 20, 30, 40 people. You're not talking about 10,000, 5,000 like it is today, you know. I'm saying it was a small base medish. Imagine Mir, Mir Yerushalayim that had 20, 30, 40 Bacharim before it became 5,000. Same idea. I mean, you know, Mir is much, much larger as far as the yeshiva, but... So, they found it interesting that this fellow's appearing once a week. Um, one bacher decided, I have to figure... And, and he would come in, go upstairs, spend several hours, and come up... The previous rebbe lived upstairs in 770 on the second floor, and then come down and walk out and go to the train. The train's right there. So he a bacher approaches him and says, Shalom Aleichem, sir. I see you come here every week. Could you tell me your name? And he ignores him. He says, uh, if you don't tell me, I'm going to have to find out who you are. And he ignores him. And he goes upstairs. When he comes out, the bacher follows him downstairs, gets onto the train, and <laughs> follows him home. And he saw he went to Penn Station, and from there he took the train, I think Penn Station, took the train to New Haven, Connecticut. And then he said, look, I, I, I got you caught red, red. you know, you, you can't get out of this. You, you got to tell me what you're doing coming to 770. And that's when he told him he is the editor of Akriya Vagdusha. And that he comes once a week to be with the previous Rebbe who teaches him chsidis 
and prepares them and, and reviews with them the articles for, for, for the month. It was a monthly publication. So in the first in the first edition of Akri of Akdusha, he published this. He introduced Hasidus to to the Yiddish speaking world, and the way he wrote it was in a way that it could have and it was interpreted by the established Orthodox world as heresy. What was the heresy? The heresy was that he seemed to poo poo the basic learning of a piece of Gemara. Like, in other words, come on, is it important to learn about one ox scoring another ox? He didn't say those words, but that's the way they interpreted what he wrote, and it became an outrage. And all the, you know, from the Yeshiva University to the Rosh Hashivas, and, the, and, and it made a very, very, a lot of noise, and there's letters to the editor, in future, in the next editions, criticizing his his article, the Frida Kerebe got hold of it, got wind of it, of course, and he called them in and he told them to write a retraction, because indeed the way he wrote it was not the most sensitive way, and he didn't explain it well, and he and he and he had him write a better explanation in the next in the next issue. Now, why do I say this? Because and a piece of Gemara has its, it has its, it has its um, definition and it has its style. And when you and when you just look at it that way, and you start kind of, you know, playing with the simple text and the simple Gemara. You're apt to create a a what seems to be something that contradicts the simple Gemara, or if it doesn't contradict, it 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 lessens it, it cheapens it, it it, it you're not you're taking away from the Hashivas. so they, they it caused an alarm, and so I I shared with you the story. Because this, in a sense, is what we're learning, and to show you how that it's practical. That without, if you're not sensitive to to, to the idea that chassidus is the the engine, the engine that that vivifies all parts of Torah, and why is that? Because chassidus is not limited to a certain category and definition. But rather, what Chassidus does is, whatever you are learning, and whatever section of Torah, whatever style of Torah you're learning, it enhances it. And and we'll see an, a, a concrete example that Abba's going to give us later in the Kuntris of Maida Ani Lefanecha. There is the way of learn, of, of understanding Maida Ani according to Pshat, Remesh, Drush, Said. And then there is the way to understand Maidani from, uh, from Hasidus' perspective. And how Hasidus illuminates each of the four parts. That's where we're at now. Let's read, read now inside Oiz Dalit on page 33. To explain the essence of Hasidus, the Rebbe says it will become clearer by understanding the inner meaning of Mashiach. The question is why? What does one have to do with the other? So he says, Ki mischara shel mitzvah neida mahusa. For the from the reward of a mitzvah, you know the essence of the mitzvah. Let me explain this. When we put on thrill in the morning, we don't know what's being accomplished. However, when you study not only the laws of Tfilm, but you will study what it says, the spiritual teachings and meanings of Tfilm, and you look at the, 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 the schar of the mitzvah, the reward of the mitzvah reveals to you, Mahusa, its, its very essence. Um, 
One second. Look at note number 30, bring some Tanya. The Alter Rebbe's interpretation on Ovis, the reward of a mitzvah is a mitzvah. How does the Alter Rebbe explain this? Chazal. That the reward of a mitzvah reflects the essential nature of the mitzvah itself. The mitzvah itself. Hold on. The mitzvah itself, the mitzvah itself is the key to know its reward. In other words, it's not as though like this. We work, we work, right? We go to work, we have a job, and we get paid for our job. Is there any connection of run between the pay and the job? No, no connection whatsoever. Whatever your job is, you get paid for it. it has nothing. To, the pay doesn't reflect in the money you're getting paid what type of job you have. Because someone can get paid a lot or a little for different types of job. How do you know what type of job he's getting paid for? You don't. Conversely, mitzvah, 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 chazal say, the reward of a mitzvah is a mitzvah, meaning... From the from the mitzvah itself, you know schara. You know, in other words, the mitzvah, the mitzvah of tefillin creates a tefillin-like experience on the spiritual level for you every morning. I don't see it now, but in 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 the mitzvah itself, there is the reward. Meaning to say, the reward is reflective of the mitzvah. So what, what he says here is that since, we're going to read now, since Hasidus is me'ain, it's, it's, it's somewhat of Torah's Mashiach, of the Torah that will be studied. When Mashiach comes, therefore, by learning Hasidus and understanding Hasidus, you have a taste of Mashiach. Let's continue inside. Through this emanating the wellsprings of Hasidus. Hasidus, next page, 34. Comes the master, this refers to the Mashiach. Mashiach. So by understanding aspects of Mashiach, Shara, which is the reward for the study of Hasidus, Nedes Mohusa, it will give us a glimpse into the essence of, uh, into the essence, into the essence. I want you to read with me together the note here, very important note, note number 32. When Mashiach was asked by the Baal Shem Tov, now you understand, Hevra. When Mashiach was asked about Shem Tov, you think it's you and I talking to each other? <laughs> the Baal Shem Tov was a tzaddik who was able to have a vision, and in his vision he was talking to Mashiach. And he asked him when he would come. Mashiach's response was, when you're fountains of Hasidus will be disseminated to the outside. Studying Torah in your little hubble is very nice, but it ain't getting Mashiach. The Rebbe told us to a big mashpia once. The Rebbe said, you think you're going to bring, Mash you're going to bring Mashiach with your 20, 30 little sheep? It's very nice. And a very important. And we need that too to educate intimately 20, 30 students calling them sheep. One second, Lisa. But you have to bring the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov to the world at large, which Baruch Hashem today, all Hasidic, all, all Hasidic groups are doing it. Bells does it in their way, Boston does it in their way, Breslov in their way, Chabad in their way, Tolna in their way, Kolakavot. But everyone has one has one the kuda in mind to disseminate. 
the, the styles of dissemination vary and can vary greatly. But the Nakuda is Osimar. Yes, yes, sir, you want to say something? Uh, the question on the, on the diuk of disseminated luchutz to the outside as opposed to, to the world, it implies that there's an inside, and then what, what, what is the outside vis-a-vis the inside? Good question. The question has been bounced around for 200 years. Basically, in the Alter Rebbe's times, if, if, if your question was asked of the Alter Rebbe's Hasidim, this, this would have been their answer. You have to bring it from the mind to the heart to action. So the, out, the inside is the soul, the nefesh. And then it goes from the soul to the cup, to the mind. And from the cup it goes to the heart. And from the heart it goes to the action. Chagas Chassidus, and the Gera Rebbe once said that, he said, we and Chabad are really the same. They begin with cup downward, and we begin with heart upward. Okay, I mean, again, I'm not saying Chabad agrees with the Gera Rebbe's idea, but there is that idea, you know what I'm saying? The idea being that you have to... to the nefesh, the soul, has everything in it, and outside would it be from the soul within man themselves. That's probably what you would have heard from the Alter Rebbe's Hasidim and the Hasidim of that generation. The subsequent seven Rebbe's of Chabad, and, and, and really more so the previous Rebbe and our Rebbe, the last two, they explained at length and also the Rashab actually started, and this is why we're learning this, because it's based on a mimer of the Rashab, that it doesn't just mean within yourself. It means to the outside, literally to other people. So, so in other words, Yoni, someone will say, look, I, I have to work on myself. You know, I, I don't have such nice middles, and etc., cetera, etc., cetera. I want to work on myself. So Baal Shem Tov says, you don't need chassidus for that. Midos, you need one of, uh, learn Musr. <laughs> what do you need chassidus? Learn Musr. Rabbi Sro Salanta in the subsequent Musr, Bali Musr, teach you how to be a mensch. Baal Shem Tov comes along and says, we need, it's a study of divinity. I'll repeat that over and over. We want to become divine. We're not just looking to be better people, nicer people more refined people. As important as that is, it still puts you and leaves you in the category of a human. We have a neshama, you hear Hevra, we have a neshama, we are a piece of God. So we, we want to we wanna reach a point of being godlike, divinity, nefesh kiss. Oh, for this, you need to do something more than just be concerned about yourself. You need to disseminate. If one is able to disseminate outside of themselves and to be concerned about the outside, and what should the outside get? Yes, sir. What should the outside get? Not just the, um, you know, the uh, excrement, excuse the expression, the excrement of Siddhis, but the schmaltz, the kishkis, huh? What'd you say? Not the psolus. Not the psolus, thank you. But the essence. Yefutsu maina secha chutza. We're not, Siddhis is not, is not sharing and teaching and selling a second rate, a second rate idea. This is the mayonot. This is the wellspring. The waters come from very deep under earth. And they come out. And if you're able to do that, not just with yourself, but chutza, then you're plugged in. And that's why the, the, the Rabbeim of Chabad, they shared and taught that your chutza minus secha chutza, this is to answer your question, which I'm glad you, you brought it up, Isser, that the chutza is not only in the chutz sheba adam. It's in the Chutz Sheba Olam. Truth be said, one second. 
Can you argue with it? Yes, you can. <laughs> In other words, if, if someone we're gonna, we're gonna tomorrow when Shem will read the, 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 the rest of the note, but someone will take this letter, this is printed in a safer, Ben Poyrus Yosef, in the name of the Baal Shem Tov. Someone will take the letter and read it without knowing any Chabad Hasidus. They'll say, Chutzah means outside your, your soul, within yourself. So you could, you could argue that. But again, based on, based on what I just said, that that doesn't make you <laughs> minosecha. That that doesn't that doesn't create a, a a a within you. It doesn't create the. It doesn't prove yet that you're really touching the springs, unless you bring the techutza outside. We're learning chesedus here. We're using this text Hebrew English. If we're able to understand these deep ideas in English, that's chutzah. That's chutzah. Because before it was put into English, for example, you had to know Hebrew, you had to be trained in, in Chabad thought, etc. And it's true, even in English, this isn't, this isn't simple and easy. It's, it's, it's you know, serious stuff and deep stuff, true. But at least there is a, a vessel now to really uh, to go about it. And, and so, what, so, what, so that's chutzah. That's outside of the uh, Hebrew and Lashon Kodesh and Torah language and Talmud is the pni is is what we're comfortable. Go write, bring it in another language. But at the end, when you do that, what does it show that you really got it? <laughs> it shows even so. That's why the, the, the Lebavitcher Rabbeim, the last three in particular, argued the, and positioned. That chutzah is much more than just your from nefesh to seichel, from seichel to midas, and midas to, to action. Is it clear? Is sir, it, is it clear? It, uh, it's clear. It's just it raised a question as you were describing this. In that, you know, we see there's a very popular now what we call the like a neo Hasidic movement, where people are interested in some of the teachings and they may learn, you know, some Sfarim and they take on some external trappings and they sing and they dance. But I'm not sure that that's really the essence, the inner aspect of it. On the other hand, maybe it's a step in the, in the, in, on the path to it. And it just, it raised that question to me, you know, when we talk about it's like, in my words, it's not the Pasolas. It's not the external trappings. It's, there's something very deep, very essential here, and it just raised a question: Me, are, are, is this the neo-Hasidic movement? Are they tapping into that or not, or is it is it a way towards it? Um, could we leave a discussion about this to maybe towards the end of the week, Blineder? <laughs> it, re it, re it requires an entire conversation, and again, it's only one man's opinion. You know, I mean, you know, there what you know that Rabbi Moshe Weinberger of Eish Kodesh in, in the Five Towns had a debate with a Litvisher rabbi about this very question. Are you aware of it? Yeah, I heard about this. Too. Oh yeah, it, 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 it was it was published in the newspapers, and oh, it was a, a very big uh, and and and. The, the literature rabbi he he argued that it's not it's not it's not where it's at and and he's a litvak he wasn't a chassid but he says what do you, what do you but I'm asking I'm asking from the Hasidic perspective from the Hasidic perspective okay good okay so we'll talk about it I have to run have a great day everyone only simchas bye bye take care.